Here we're going to look at a partnership liquidation where the partnership's terminating the business and distributing its assets using the marshalling of assets concept here. So what is the marshalling of assets here? That's applied when a partnership and or one of the partners is insolvent. And for our example here, we're going to have an insolvent partner and an insolvent partnership. So let's go down here and look at our partnership here. We have partners A and partner B here. So partner A has assets of $26,000 and liabilities of $20,000. So their assets are greater than their liabilities, so partner A here is solvent. But moving over to partner B here, they have assets of $24,000, liabilities here of $30,000. So they have uh, less assets than liabilities, so they are insolvent. And then for the partnership itself here, they have assets of 40 thousand liabilities here of fifty thousand dollars so there again their assets are less than their liabilities so they're insolvent here so using this marshalling of assets uh, concept here first we look at the partnerships assets and what are they're first available for the payment here of the partnership debts here so going down to our partnership here their assets we can use them for paying off the liabilities here so uh, we've got forty thousand dollars worth of assets subtracting that from the fifty thousand dollars worth of liabilities so we have a net amount here of liabilities still remaining at ten thousand dollars so the next thing we have to do is look at our partner a and partner b here so let's go up to our marshalling of assets concept here. So the personal assets of partners are applied against the personal debts and they're ranked in order of priority here. First the amounts are owed to the personal creditors here, then secondly amounts owed to the partnership creditors, and then thirdly amounts owed to the partnership by way of contribution. That's the amounts in the capital balance of the partnership and if there's a debit balance here the uh, partner has to pay that back to the partnership here. So let's go down and look at our partner A and partner B here. Um, First, we have to offset our liabilities with our assets here. So we have assets of 26000 here for partner A, less the $20,000 worth of liabilities. So it gives us a balance here of $6,000 worth of assets. And then the next thing we have to note here for uh, is a capital account here for partner A. They start out with a debit balance here of $14,000. So they have a negative balance in their capital account here. So the next thing, let's look at partner B here. Again, they have assets of $24,000, and we would offset that against the liabilities here of $30,000. So uh, the net amount here is $6,000 worth of liabilities. So they are insolvent, or they have more liabilities here at $6,000 worth here. So the next thing we have to do here in this marshalling of assets concept is go and look at the amounts that are owed to the partnership creditor here and how we'd allocate that here. So the only one with any balance here would be partner A. They have $6,000 remaining in their assets here. So for the payment of partnership creditors here, that would be the unsatisfied partnership creditors. They make claim the net personal assets of any solvent partner. Now, now that was partner A, it's solvent here. Regardless of the amount of the partner's interest in the capital of the partnership, partner A's capital is in, was going to be increased by the payment of the partnership liabilities here. So uh, here capital A uh, partner A has a capital account here of a negative $14,000 and they're going to make payments here to the uh, liabilities for the partnership here of $6,000. So they're going to increase their capital account here by $6,000. So it's going to give them a net amount here in their capital account of $8,000. So let's go up and look at our allocation here. So payment to the partnership creditors, uh, partner A, their assets here would be reduced by $6,000 and then that would be offset against the partnership liabilities here. Partnership liabilities were sitting here at $10,000. So subtracting out the $6,000 that came from partner A's asset here leaves the partnership liabilities here at $4,000. Now uh, using partner A's assets here to offset the partnership's liability would increases uh, the capital account here for partner A by $6,000. And we looked at that down over here in their capital account here. So the next thing we have to do here is we 
we end up with a liability here in the partnership of $4,000 after subtracting out those $6,000 worth of assets from partner A here from the li total liability that was remaining here at $10,000 gives us that $4,000 worth of liability in the partnership here. And then uh, part, uh, the capital account here for partner A, the balance here was the $6,000 subtracted for, or reducing the $14,000 negative balance leaves them with $8,000 here uh, as a negative balance in their capital account here. So now this is key here. Now if partner A later pays this $8,000 here, the partnership will eliminate the debt capital balance here. Uh, well, to, if they paid the partnership to eliminate the debt capital balance, the part payment will be allocated first to the partnership liabilities and then to partner B. However, if partner A cannot or is not able to make the payment, the claims against the partnership by the collectors uh, and partner B will be totally uncollectible here. So it all depends on what uh, partner A here can pay off on this capital amount here. So first it would be allocated to the partnership liability, whatever amount they could pay, and then the next it would go to partner B here. And also to any of the uh, liabilities of the partnership. It depends what capital A can pay off here. So let's go look at uh, the capital account here for partner B here. They have a credit balance here of $4,000 in it. Now this is a key point that we want to make here. The unsatisfied personal creditors here of partner B are unable to seek recovery against the credit capital balance of partner B because the partnership itself is not solvent here. So uh, looking here, partner B is insolvent, and the recourse uh, of partner B personal uh, recourse of partner B's personal creditors have against the partnership depends on partner A's future contribution to the partnership. So everything is resting here on partner A and any uh, future contribution that they can make towards the uh, towards this debt in there capital account here. So if they can pay off some of that capital account, it, first it would go to reduce the liabilities here of the partnership. That's the unsatisfied personal creditors here of, uh, of the partnership here. And again, uh, capital account here for partner B is sitting at $4,000 here and uh, uh, capital account here for partner A is sitting at a negative $8,000 here. And this is how, um, how we'd handle this marshalling of assets here where we've got this insolvent partner. In this case, we had one partner B here and we had this insolvent partnership here. So uh, again, this is just a summary here on how you'd handle this particular case here with both an insolvent partner and insolvent partnership here using the marshalling of assets concept. Okay, in summary here, I want to go over this partner B's liability here that's remaining at $6,000. Their personal liabilities that we have or to their personal creditors here. So uh, partner B has a capital account here where they have a credit balance here of $4,000 here. But as we talked about it before here, the unsatisfied personal, personal creditors of partner B here are unable to seek recovery against this credit capital balance of of partner B because the partnership itself is insolvent here. So partner B has these personal debts here of $6,000 here, but those personal creditors can't go over after that through their capital account here because the partnership itself is insolvent. Now here, partner B is insolvent because partner B is insolvent and the recourse partner B's personal creditors have against the partnership depends upon partner A's future contribution to the partnership. So again, we have to go up here and look at partner A. So if Partner A, if they can pay down their negative uh, capital a balance here of $8,000, first it goes to the partnership liability here of $4,000, and then the next it would go to par uh, the capital account here for partner B here. But then uh, these, these personal liabilities here of partner B here for $6,000, it all depends on how much partner A can pay down on their capital account here. So it, it, it again, it just hinges on um, the capital account here for partner A here. And again, this uh, this capital account here for partner B is sitting at $4,000, but uh, the, the personal creditors here have liabilities against partner B of $6,000, but they can't touch this capital account here because the partnership itself was is insolvent.